King of glory, I decrease totally that you increase in me. That Father, O oh Lord, even as I speak, O oh Lord, I will speak, O oh Lord, even as your oracle in the mighty name of Jesus. I ask that for each and every one of your children, including me, that you have brought here today, Father, we will be blessed by this sermon. And at the end of the day, the glory will remain yours. Thank you, King of glory. In Jesus' matchless name, we have prayed. In Jesus' matchless name, we have prayed. Please, let's be seated. I just want to especially thank uh, the youth and, of course, the pastor for the privilege to get to stand before you. And uh, I'm Brother John Utu. Uh, when he talks about traveling up and down, it's simple. I have been posted out of uh, Lagos. So I walk in, in, in Port Harcourt and so have to come in intermittently to town. And so I thank God for safe travels. I thank God for all that he has helped me in the last year in the movement of and now. And I know that being here with you today is ordained by him because he orchestrated it in his own way. And I pray the Lord that what we shall hear today shall be all that he had ordained for you to hear in the mighty name of Jesus. So when I was told to take the service today, I was a bit concerned, you know, and I was told it was going to be a bit about Nigeria. And uh, I was a bit concerned with all that has happened in the recent past and all that is also happening. But I also believe it was for me because I would consider myself an incredible optimist about this nation, Nigeria. However, I know that in the last couple of months and days, my faith also has been severely tried. And so as I pondered, over what I would speak, unlike the way the Lord deals with me, many times he gives me messages and I don't know what the title is until at the end of the day. But this one, he gave me a title and then I had to fill up the message. And you know, I, I sent it to him. And the Lord said we would be speaking about outliers. The outliers thriving in adversity. So you'll be wondering what is it about Nigeria with the outliers. But we're going to try to take it up, maybe 25 minutes to take it simply through. I trust the Lord that each and every one of us, wherever the situation looks like there is an adversity, we will flourish. We will thrive in the mighty name of Jesus. I'll quickly take a text, Daniel 1, 3 to 5. The whole of Daniel 1 is what I wanted to read, but because of our time, I'll read 3 to 5, and I'll read verse 8 to 9, and then 17 to 20. Daniel 1. And the Lord spake unto Ashpenaz, the master of his eunuch, that he should bring certain of the children of Israel, and of the king's seed, and of the princes, children in whom there was no blemish, and well-favored, and skillful in all wisdom, and cunning in knowledge, and understanding signs, and such as had ability to stand in the king's palace, and whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans. And the king appointed them a daily provision of the king's meat and of the wine which he drank, so nourishing them three years, that at the end thereof they might stand before the king. Verse 8 to 9. But Daniel proposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. And God brought Daniel into favor and tender love with the prince of the eunuchs. Verse 17 to 20. As for these four children, God gave them knowledge and skill in all learning and wisdom. And Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. Now at the end of the days that the king had said he should bring them in, then the prince of the eunuchs brought them in before Nebuchadnezzar, and the king communed with them, and among them all found none like Daniel, who was outstanding. Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, and therefore stood, and therefore stood there before the king. What does an outlier mean? A person or a thing who is differing from all other members of a particular set. And you will agree with me that Daniel and his cohorts were completely different because I'm sure he said, let us bring the children of the king. So there were lots more of them. But you did not hear the name of any of the other people that were brought except these four, particularly Daniel. 
there were outliers, there were people who stood out. It is a single data point that goes far outside the average value of a group of statistics. So a single data point it stands out completely. What is striving? Prosperous, growing, flourishing, doing well, successful, healthy, and strong. And when you say then you're thriving in adversity, adversity is a difficult or unpleasant situation. So when you say somebody is flourishing, flourishing in a difficult situation, it's almost like an oxymoron, you know, what they used to teach us. So how can somebody be flourishing when the situation is difficult and unpleasant? But I pray the Lord that irrespective of what it might be in the times, that your life shall flourish, your life shall thrive in the mighty name of Jesus. So how does it con you know how does it then concern Nigeria? Unfortunately, most of us look at this country, you know, from the lenses of adversity. And that is because of the things that have happened in the recent days and in the recent times. We look at this country from the lens of adversity, from the lens of pain, from the lens of suffering. All people look at is what is the cost of dollar, how much is school fees and all of that. So it, it, it tends to look as if there's lots of adversity going on, and particularly for the youth. And thankfully, the Lord prepared this really for youth service, and of course, for each and every one of us seated, to here, seated here today. So particularly for those who, in quote, would say they have never really seen the time where this country was really thriving. We're talking to people in a time where everybody seems to want to pack his bag and let you know, leave the country. We're talking to people at a time where the youths are disgruntled, disenchanted. They do not feel that there's a lot left for them. However, I just want to tell you that there are still many great things, still many, many good things to talk about this country. When I was preparing this message, a text message, one of, I was talking with my colleagues and I read what he said. He, he sent, you know, we, we were talking and he sent me a text message. And I planned I would read part of it. If not only, but just to give some of us some bit of encouragement about this country. And it was a simple question that a, a, a son asked to his father. And said, and like many youth would answer, why are we like this 63 years after? And this was the answer his father gave to him. He said, you need to have been here 59 years ago. This place was a bush. He said, after 59 years, we have at, we have at least a city looking, a fairly good looking city like Abuja. Note that 59 years ago, Abuja was a bush. He said, 59 years ago, we had only, well, this is not one I checked. Yes, last night as I was doing this, and it's two universities, University of Nigeria, Asuka, and University of Ibadan. Only two universities. Today we have 170 universities in this country, Nigeria. 59 years ago, we had less than 200 qualified doctors in the whole of the country. But today, 59 years after, Unilag alone produces at least 250 every year. 30 years ago, the entire Lake it was a mangrove swamp. Today it ranks among the fastest developing estates in the entire world. There was no Nigerian pilot 59 years ago. Today we have female Nigerian pilots flying airplanes along in international airlines. We were the first African nation to participate and win a junior World Cup. And total national income was less than 1 billion 59 years ago. Today our foreign direct investment is over 20 billion USD. Association of Nigerian Physicians in Northern America has 5,000 Nigerian doctors and medical professionals, the second highest ethnic group of physicians in the United States and in the UK after India. That's progress. In the last 59 years, we have had a Nobel Prize winner, a, Pul a, a Pulitzer Award winner, and other professional leaders of refuge. In this country now, we now do renal surgery, organ transplants, good scientific breakthroughs. We have drug fetishness and poor hygiene. Some of you might not know, in those days when you went to school, you always had children with polio.
But today, polio has completely disappeared. It looks like something that never existed. When we were in secondary school, lots and lots of friends who had polio. We contribute about 5% of the global fossil fuel in the entire country. We've earned a lot of money from that, but yet, of course, you know, it might have been mismanaged. We fought the civil war. We survived. Not many countries. Look at Libya. Look at all the countries that have fought civil wars and see where they are today. Many, 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 many things he wrote here. And at the end of the day, what he said is that we've tried as a nation. And I think we have moved forward despite the challenges that we have faced as a nation. And so what I want to tell you today, the message I come with is a message of hope. One that irrespective of what you think you face today, you think that things are bad. But I can tell you if people will remember there was a time there was a structural adjustment program. And we used to have what they call essential commodities. My father was a senior civil servant then, but I remember that we had to ration milk in the house. In fact, there was a time we didn't, we stopped drinking milk for a period. It was just plenty. I don't know if there are many people in the 80, 84, 85, and about 86. And so if you think that things are rough, things were rough also. And, and in the words of a certain man, I listened to Jim Ron, he says, look, in the next couple of years, things will still almost be the same way as if they, are, they were today. So you will be thinking, oh, those times people enjoy. But I can tell you that we graduated at times. When I left school, how many banks were existed? Absolutely, I don't think we were about two, two banks, United, UBA, maybe Union Bank and First Bank. Then you had regional banks. There was nothing like electronic banking. When you go, they bring out your card, they write your how much you've withdrawn today. You couldn't withdraw from another branch in the next street. Nigeria has moved forward. We're talking about telephones. When I started work as a civil servant, there was nothing like mobile telephony. But yet, you are in days, my brothers and my sisters, where you wake up, children can leave their homes and come into this, and come into Lagos. Many of them survive only on photography. Some are sound engineers. Some as YouTubers. Things that we could never have dreamt of when we started life. So the opportunities that exist and abound in this nation today are such that they are very expansive. And I think we should just sometimes just take ourselves to say, Father, we thank you. The fact that we are not in a war today, all we would say is, Father, we thank you. I sent Pastor a video yesterday of a little child in, in, Palestine, in Palestine. If we decided to take ourselves after what happened in last year and decided to run ourselves into war, do you know what it would mean a hundred and something million people running around, scattered around Africa? But the Lord has kept us together as one. Well. I think we have many reasons to just say, Father, we thank you. As a nation, we have so many reasons to say, Father, we thank you. And I pray today that irrespective of the way things are, and in these times, I can assure you that millionaires have come out of this time. Billionaires have come out of these times. People have tried in these times. And simply because they have refused to look at life from a place of a cup, a cup half empty. They have looked at life from a place of a cup half full. And so, today what I come to do is to sort of charge us, to say to us, do not look at life from a place of a cup half full, a, a cup half empty. Look at life from a place of a cup half full. Because the Lord is filling you. The Lord is going to make things work out for you in the mighty name of Jesus. But there are a few things I want to speak about. And there's something that was attributed to a man of God. He said, I, 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 I won't mention his name because it could be one of these, you know, social media. But it resonated with me. He said, you cannot prosper or thrive in a country that you do not love or speak evil about. Whether the man who said it said it. But even if it were not him, I will also tell you clearly, you cannot prosper or thrive in a country that you do not love or speak evil about. If you speak evil about a place, that is the seed you have. That place is the only thing you have. That is like the soil you have to plant. And what you're doing is speaking evil into the soil that you have to plant. There's no way you can thrive or prosper in a place like that. 
The Bible tells us in Jeremiah 29, verse 7, it says, Seek the peace and prosperity of the city where I sent you into exile. Pray the Lord for it. He said, For its welfare will determine what? Your welfare. And yet, what do we do? All we hear around at Nigeria Cruz. Brethren, I refuse to take this country as a cruise. I hear, all you hear is, let Nigeria not happen to you. Brethren, Nigeria happened to me. And by the special grace of God, I am happy with what happened. Nigeria happened to Dan Gote. Nigeria, so when you want to look at it, it's from the position you want to look at it. Jimovia, Nigeria happened to him. Tony Elumelu is from a low state university. Nigeria happened to him. You can name people that Nigeria has happened to. If you look in this church, there are lots and lots of ministers sitting here, and this is, you can say Nigeria happened to them. And you will be proud to know that Nigeria happened to them. Nigeria happened to me. And I'm a proud Nigeria. I pray that we develop this positive culture for our nation in the mighty name of Jesus. Brethren, the Bible says pray for your leaders and pray for your places. And this is where I'm going to outline because I will soon learn this off. I just have about 12 minutes, but there's a lot that I put here. That the geo prays and says that, oh, our currency will grow again, things will become better. And what you hear the majority of people say, they go onto the internet and start saying things about it. And many of us as Christians are likely to join and say, oh, yeah, you people are not talking against this, you are not doing this, you are not doing that. Do you remember 2 Kings 7 verse 2? A famine like this, and the man of God came and said, before tomorrow there will be plenty in Israel. Somebody stood up and said, even if the windows of heaven were open, it cannot happen. What happened? The man of God said to him, it will happen but you will not see I pray that it will not be your portion in the mighty name of Jesus. And you see, that's it. Christianese, when we say we pray, it will not be your portion, everybody screams amen. But how can it not be your portion when you say the same things that they say? You do the same things that they do. Nigerian Cruz, you say it. This country, they already know who they want to select and put in this NAPC, you say it. You say the same things that they say and you expect to thrive in adversity. It is impossible. You will always end up in the place of the average like them. And that is why you have to stand out. That is how you have to be an outlier. It is not just about speaking Christianese and saying it is not my portion. It is about what you speak to yourself. When they say, oh, they already know who they want to take in this place of job, you are agreed. The day they say, oh, now hungry, go finish on now, you agree. How can you take those things? You have to be an outlier. You have to be a non-conformist. You have to be an incurable optimist about your future. You have to be the one to be able to speak about the things that the Lord has spoken about you. And the first thing I put here, and I'm running out of time, was that you have to choose the path of honoring God. Daniel was in where? Exile. In another man's land. He didn't sit and do a pity party. He took charge of what he had to do. He chose to honor God. And when they gave him the things that every other person ate, he chose to be a complete outlier. He said, those are not the things I will eat. Me and my friends, that's not what we are going to eat. Try us for three, four days and see what will happen. They did not conform. If Daniel had made a mistake to do the same things that the people had done, eating in the temple of the king, they would be at the same place as the rest of the people. There would be no Daniel in the Bible. I can assure you that. So the first thing you need to do is to choose a path to honor God. Do the things that will honor your God as a child of God. Because I believe all of us here are children of God. Then you need to change your mindset. You need to change your philosophy. I cannot speak enough about this. You know, pastor has said this over and over. If there's anything anybody would have learned in this church in, 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 in digging deep in service and all of that is about you speaking the things, only the things that God has said about you to yourself. You need to learn to change your mindset. Do not use your mouth to cross yourself. That's what he was telling us in digging deep 
on Tuesday for those of us who like who daily and for those of us who were here. Always confess what you want to yourself. Brethren, when men are telling you that there is a casting out, what should you be saying? There is a lifting up. There is a lifting up. When men are telling you that it is impossible, you say with God all things are possible. Instead of saying that they have already chosen the people to go, you say that my God, can, it is me, I am chosen of God. I am God's favorite. When men say there is hunger in the land, you tell them that your God will supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. Why do we do this to ourselves? Why do we choose to be average? Why do we choose to say the things that these people say and at the end of the day you just wake up? You think it is the Christianese that you say it's not my portion that will help you? No! In this same country, people are thriving. I pray the Lord that all you need to thrive in this country, the Lord will grant unto you in the mighty name of Jesus. The second thing you need to do is to take responsibility for your action. Daniel took complete responsibility. I had listed a lot of people here for the lack of time. Joseph took responsibility. He did not create a pity party for himself. His brother sold him into slavery. He went into the land of Egypt. Huge adversity. He was in prison. He was a servant to somebody. But the Bible says he grew in favor. You think that favor was that he sat down in one place and nothing, and, 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 and the man handed his entire house to him? No! He walked and the man saw that this man was useful to him and gave him his entire house except his wife. Daniel was also like that. If you read the book of Daniel and you go to Daniel 6, you will see that even when the second king came into the land of the Chaldeans, he still took Daniel and made him head among the princes. Simply because those ones chose to be different. You have to take responsibility. You cannot sit back and say to yourself, oh, my father didn't do this. After all, my own father could have also bought Lakey, and today I'll be selling the land. He didn't. People sit back and say, oh, my father didn't send me to school. You think times were okay? Our fathers, lots of them could not go to school because some, maybe one person or two people in the family, because three or four others had to go to school. In my time, I know my friend in Lagos today, driving. His father was a palm wine tapper. We went to school together. His brothers could not go to school because he was in school. They could, when they paid his wife fees, they could not pay school fees for his brother. See, we left university, they lived in a thatched house. Look at the house he lives in Victory Park today. Look at the houses he has around town. No country in the world he has not visited. He could have sat down and said Nigeria happened to him. But no, he stood up and decided that he was not going to be what the people called him to be. But he stood up and became an outlier in his family. He stood up firmly and strongly. And today, his parents, before they died, lived in a, a brick house. His, two, his brothers have gone to school because he has been able to pay for them. His children's school overseas. That is a son of a palm wine tapper. How about you? I'm not saying very far. I see him, I speak with him at least once in a month. He's my very close friend. I know where I also came from. If I go back from the past to where I came from, long story will not be able to live here. You should not sit down and blame others. Take responsibility. Daniel took responsibility. Joseph took responsibility. Develop your gifts and your talents. Today, lots of people don't even need to go to school to make money. I see children wake up. I was talking to a colleague those days. Say, you, when you come out of school, you see that you, if you are in the oil and gas, oh, glory be to God. I have never discussed being in the oil and gas with any of my children one day because I know that that is not the future anymore. And so people tell you, oh, those days, a 504 used to call five, cost 5,000 naira. And oh, see how much it costs today. How much were salaries in those days? Till my father left this thing as a director, he probably didn't earn 5,000. Parents used to build houses over a 35-year career. Today, you build two, three houses in a year. And then we think that there are no outliers. We think that people are not thriving. We are lying to ourselves. So if you think that Nigeria is happening to you and what you want to do is to sit back and just be lethargic, sit back and not take the bull by the horn, you are the one doing yourself. You have chosen to be average, and because you've chosen to be average, my brother, nobody can help you. No matter how much you shout, it's not my portion. It will be your portion. It's not a cost. 
But it is just a charge for us as youths to rise up today and take the bull by the hand. Develop your gifts. Develop your gifts. What did David know how to do? Play the harp. That took him to the king's palace. That was all. In fact, when David went to fight Goliath, they gave him all the armor of soldiers to go and fight. But he didn't know how to use that. He knew how to use a sling. And I was listening to somebody somewhere. He said, success is not about doing extraordinary things. It is about doing ordinary things extraordinarily well. He used that sling extraordinarily well. And today, David is reckoned with. It's, the Bible says he's a man after God's own heart. Don't be mediocre. Don't stay for average. He played his harp and the king brought him in. Joseph, when Joseph gave the man and said to him, do this, after seven years, do that and do all of that, he told Pharaoh. Pharaoh said, who else can do it? Very clearly what happened was that David, I mean, Joseph, after saying what he did, he was able to implement the things that he said. That shows a person of high intellectual capacity, a person of high gifting, who did not wait to say that I am in exile. Any day they come and free me, I can start my life. He did not wait. And you know when his brothers came, he had put all of that behind him because he realized that to move forward, he had to leave some of all those things that were bothering him behind. He did not sit and allow anything, you know, to be a burden to himself. But today we see people sit down. My father did not do this. This my uncle did not give me that. All of that and all of that. Brethren, that is mediocrity. You have to develop your talent and your values. Even if it is singing that you can sing. In these days, there are hundreds and thousands of singing competitions. Some right, some not right, but this thing. But people make money from those places. People sing on YouTube, make money. Develop your skills to a point that people will see you and want you. That's how Saul wanted the person who wanted to play the harp. The guy sat in the bush playing the harp and learning the skill. Develop your skills to a way that people and your gifts to a place that you'll be so valuable that people will want you. I tell my children, major in the minor, don't major in the minor. You have to make the main thing the main thing. So when they are there playing and I ask them, I say, you say you want to be a, a computer engineer or you want to be a computer scientist, just give them for granted. And I said, if someone were to ask you, you want to be a computer scientist, what would you be doing now? Is it watching this game you are watching, playing this game, or looking at the assignment you did not get 60 over, uh, 60, 20 over 20? Would you be spending your time revising your assignment or would you be playing, spending your time doing the game? And he said, spending the time doing the assignment. I said, well, that's what you should do. Major, don't major on the minor. Make the main things the main things. Even Jesus said, He said, I have to do the works of the one who sent me while it is still light. For night cometh when no man can do what? Work. And yet you spend your time doing what? Pressing food. And it is a new lingo. I don't go relax, I don't the press phone. Majoring on the minor. Spending time on Instagram, spending time on places where, I mean, if you're making money from there, that's a different conversation. But we spend our time majoring on the minor and complaining about the country. The Lord will help us in Jesus' mighty name. Anyway, we also need to learn to exalt our God above all our adversities. You need to learn to live a life of thanksgiving. Look at life from a positive point of view, knowing that the God who said to you in 3 John 2, he said, I, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospered. He's the same one who said in Jeremiah 29, 11, he says, I know the thoughts I think of you, thoughts of good and not of evil, to give you a future and a desired end. And then you sit back and tell yourself that this God who said this thing is not able to do this thing. What is able to do this is for me to sit back and complain about the nation. What is able to give me the right path to make me succeed or thrive in this country is to sit back and do what I think that others do. What I bring us today is a simple story. All I'm saying to us is if you want to thrive in this current situation, you have to be an outlier. 
You cannot do the same things that everybody does. Say the same things that they say. Make the same confession that they confess. And at the end, think that you will cry. You have to stand out and say to yourself, my God has promised me this. And you need to know that this and this and this. Pick up the Bible. The pastor tells us continuously, what are those promises of God in the Bible? If you are asked now, what are the promises? What are you holding on to? What is the word you are holding on to? To achieve what or what you are looking for. Maybe it's a job. Maybe it's a wife. Maybe it's a growth in business. Probably don't have it. But we know all the indices of the reasons why the things should not try or why the things should not work. I pray the Lord that today, even as he has brought us this message, that the next time we will be talking about Nigeria happening to us, you'll be saying Nigeria happened to me, and when it happened to me, my business grew, my business thrived, I, become, I became the greatest. In my company, I got promotion. I had to leave that world because it was too small for me. I grew into another business. I had to take businesses. You want to take here people taking territories and taking, you know, taking possessions of territories. Conquering ter territories. Conquering businesses. That's what we want to hear from you. And I pray the Lord that everything that we require and desire, even as we get anointed this morning, everything you require to thrive in adversity, the Lord will grant unto you in the mighty name. I pray the Lord today. And you're going to ask the Lord, even as you're anointed this morning, that every spirit of average, every spirit of average, the Lord will take away from you in the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible records for Daniel, it says the spirit of excellence was upon him. So everything he did was excellent. He did not settle in the average. And the reason that a lot of us will do the things, that a, the, a lot of the things will happen to us is simply because we are settling in for the average. I pray the Lord that we will be outliers, we will be incurable optimists, that every time it looks like the devil wants to take a stand against us, we will step up 10 stands and tell them this is not what God has for me and speak the right things that you should speak in your life, in the life of your children, in the life of your businesses, in your workplace, in the mighty name of Jesus.